Hello everyone! Spring for GraphQL got released, which means that Spring has finally first-class support for building GraphQL APIs. The reference documentation is very nice, it goes deep, but I don't think it really explains well how to start building an application with Spring for GraphQL. So in this video, I will go step by step through the process of building a GraphQL API with Spring Boot. Spring for GraphQL is available starting from Spring Boot 2.7. So make sure that you pick at least version 2.7 over here. Then we go to dependencies and we choose Spring GraphQL, but also we need to pick if we want to go with traditional servlet APIs, so Spring Web, or with Webflux. In our case, I'm just going to go with Spring Web. And um, since the example application I'm going to build will use a real relational database, or maybe not so real because it's going to be H2, just for the sake of demo purposes. And I will choose Java 17 because why not? And I will hit generate and import the project into IntelliJ. I assume you have some experience already with JPA and Spring Data JPA, so I'm not going to show step by step how to build entities and repositories. This is right now done magically, quickly in the background. Okay, so what we've got here are two entities, book and author. Uh, that look more or less like this. So author has a field, just ID, name, and it also has a collection of books. Then a book has a title, it has also a publisher, and it also has a many-to-one relation with author. Both of them have repositories, so the JPA setup is pretty much done. I also set the DDL author to create drop just for you know demo purposes so that the application gets up and I don't really have to write a database schema or anything like this. And now we can switch to the actual GraphQL content. So how to expose some database operations or domain operations through a GraphQL API. The first thing that we have to do is we have to create a, a new directory called GraphQL in source main resources. And then there has to be a file called schema GraphQLS. That's important to remember. There is an IntelliJ IDEA plugin for GraphQL that I recommend to install. Then you get a nice syntax highlighting in all your GraphQL files. We are going to expose some relatively simple CRUD type of APIs where we just want to fetch authors, fetch books, and also add them. So we are going to start with a query, a query to fetch all the authors. So we have to define a type that is called query. And then all the queries go inside here. So let's do authors. And this is going to return a collection of, of a type author. Square brackets means that this is going to be a collection, not just a single entry. And now let's define a type of author where we put that it has an ID, which is a type of ID. Uh, it's like a special GraphQL scalar type for identifiers. And then author has also a name which is a string, it's also a required field, and it also has collection of books. So it will be an array of type book. Now, as a second step, we define a book, and the type book and both type authors have to match pretty much what we have defined here. So there is a title and there is a publisher, and there is also an ID. So it's an ID, it has a title, which is a string, and then it has a publisher, which is also a string. Let's say title is required, publisher, Maybe not necessarily. And this defines our GraphQL schema, our API schema. So this schema will be also used by the client and the API is crystal clear from both sides. Everything is clear. Like when you just look at the schema, you know what's available and what is not available. And potentially you can use also some tooling to generate classes for it. Um, but we are not going to use it. We are just going to expose our entities, which is not necessarily even the best idea, but just for the sake of the demo purposes, it's perfectly fine. And it's also probably perfectly fine in some types of applications too. All right. So now how to glue our entities and the, and the repositories with a GraphQL. We are going to create something that you are very familiar with, which is a controller. So it's going to be an outer controller. Uh, with this difference that probably for last couple of years you have used all the time REST controller. Now it's going to be just a regular old school controller. And instead of using Spring MVC annotations to do the mapping, we use GraphQL annotations, um, which is a query mapping. If you are familiar with Spring MVC, you will feel totally at home because it, it is just very, very similar. 
So this method we is going to return ah, iterable of author and the name has to be the name of the method has to match what we have defined in the GraphQL schema. If it doesn't match, we can provide a different name over here, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to keep it exactly as it is defined in the schema file. And now I'm going to inject private final outer repository. And just return a list of authors. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, it's almost it. On the application startup, I have already added some code that adds two authors and also some collections of books for them. While you build REST APIs to play with an API, you either use curl or so command line tool like HDPy um, or some more sophisticated thing like Postman or Insomnia or, or anything like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure you are familiar with this. For GraphQL, there is a, I mean, you can also use just HTTP client, but there is a nicer way to do it. And uh, you can use GraphQL console, which is also comes with Spring GraphQL. You just have to enable it because very likely you don't want to uh, use it in production, right? So we will just enable it. So there is a Spring GraphQL, GraphQL enabled true. And now if I start the application and if I go to localhost 8080 slash GraphQL, there will be a UI with a playground to just use my, um, to use my GraphQL API. All right. So I go to 8080 GraphQL and I have already something saved here in the cache. Doesn't matter. And now this even has auto completion. So if I hit control space, uh, it can tell me what, what can I do with this API? So I'm going to just run a query and I want to query for authors. And that's something special now with GraphQL in comparison to traditional REST APIs that I can specify which fields exactly do I want. So if I just specify here ID and I hit enter, it will return only IDs of the authors. If I uh, also ask for a name, it will return also a name. And the same with books. I can tell the books, but since book is an object, I also have to say that, okay, I just want you know books with all the titles that uh, belong to these authors. So I believe this is very convenient. It's also potentially saves some data that it's transferred over the wire. But to be honest, like if you use JZIP, it doesn't really matter that much. The interesting part is that each one of these fields could actually come from, not necessarily from the database, but it could come from any other external service where potentially fetching this field is expensive. And with GraphQL and Spring for GraphQL, we can develop our backend in a way that this expensive operation is only executed when this particular field is listed over here. And if it's not, then the expensive operation does not really get invoked at all. But we will get to this either later in this video or maybe in another video. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so we have now query, that's cool. Most likely we will not really want to fetch all the authors because like for big database, this will kill our database, but we want to add a method or rather a query that will fetch an author by ID. So I will add another query, author by ID that will return this time just, just, you know, just an outer entity. And I, then I go back to author controller and in a very similar way, I create a query mapping that returns an author. The method name has to match what we defined over here. So this is author by ID. And author by ID means that we have to put an argument and ID. This argument also goes over here to the method parameters. And similar to Spring MVC, we have to annotate it, but this time it's an argument annotation from Spring GraphQL. So it tells us that this is an argument provided to a GraphQL query and we can just return alter repository find by id with id find by id returns optional so it may or may not find it we can also change this method to return optional and spring for graphql will be able to handle it in the proper way okay so application is restarted 
Now, if I refresh it, uh, then I will get this auto completion again. I will comment this part for now as we don't need it. And I will just want to fetch an outer by ID. And let's put ID one. Then I have to put what fields I'm interested in. So I'm interested in ID, name, and books, and just the type. Whoops. Well, let's let's say that this is just going to be ID and name. Oopsie. OK, so now if I execute it, I get the outer. Another interesting part about GraphQL is that you can execute multiple queries at once. So within a single HTTP request, because under the hood, the transport protocol for GraphQL in this particular case is HTTP. It can be also something different, but by default, this is HTTP. And I can execute them both at once. And with single HTTP request, I get answers for all the queries that I specified. So potentially, if you're building a website, you can make a one HTTP request to get all the information that you, that you need. So potentially, this one single request can take less time than you would execute this request individually, which may or may not be true with HTTP2. It doesn't really matter that much. But this is just a possibility with GraphQL, so it's just worth to remember. OK, uh, and as a next step, uh, we have queries. And let's say the queries are for now done. As a next step, we are going to add a mutation. So mutation is a way to express that we want to modify something, not just fetch, but actually do an operation that changes something. So all the adding, updating, and deleting goes here. So there has to be a type mutation. And then we will add a mutation, add book. The argument for a mutation can be just individual arguments, or we can create an object that will just wrap them, like you would do normally with Java. And we will do the same actually here. So we will call it a book. And the argument will be a book input. Input is a special type in GraphQL that defines the input arguments for mutations. So let's put here input, call it book input. And to add book, we need to provide title and publisher, but we also have to say what is the outer ID. So the outer ID will be an ID. And this is a required information. When we add a book, we want to get back and type of book. So the saved book with an ID. That's great. So now let's go to, we can actually even add it here in the outer controller. So as you can imagine, it's not a query mapping, but it's rather a mutation mapping. Again, it has to match the types. So this returns book. The method name has to match its add book. And now we again use the argument annotation, which in this case, reflects like a request body from Spring MVC of a type book input. But the book input is, of course, not yet created. Since these input parameters are just really DTOs, if you are using new version of Java, you can use records, which fit really perfectly well. And the book input will have a title of type string. It, have a, it has a publisher, and it has a long outer ID. So far, so good. When we want to add a book, so let's create a, uh, just a new book. We've got to provide a title, publisher, and the outer entity. So title is easy. We take it from book title. Publisher the same, so we take it from input type publisher, and now the outer. We have to fetch the outer from the database, so we do find by ID. We look for outer ID, and if it's not found, we can just throw an exception that um, outer not found. Probably. There is a better way to do it. OK, so we have now an outer. Now we have a book. We need also a book 
repository over here. And we can return book repository save book. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, this is very, very similar to what you would do with Spring MVC. And pretty much all the same rules apply in a way that, you know, things should be wrapped into transactional methods. Probably you need a service layer if you are building a real application. Um, but, you know, this is, this is just a demo. All right, so let's go back to the console, refresh it. I will comment this part out. And now I can use mutation at book, which is a type of book, where we say, what is the title? And I have no really good titles in mind right now. Let's say Spring Cloud in action. And the publisher will be running. And the author ID, let's put number two. What we want to get back is only the ID of the book. So let's execute it now. We have added the book with ID six. We can query for it. Let's remove this. So now let's just query for all the books with ID and also with publisher. So we can see that Mark just released a new book, Spring Cloud in Action. And you know, this looks very easy, very convenient, but there is a problem here. Maybe you have noticed it, but in case you have not, let me enable SQL logging. Logging level SQL, um, and let's put it to debug restart the application and let's see what actually happens when we when we execute our query. All right, so let me clear it, go back to the query and first we will just fetch the outers. So we are fetching the outers. Uh, as expected, there is a select outer from the outer table executed against the database. But now if we also want to select books, then things got a little bit more tricky because this actually starts over here, right? So we select the outers and now for each outer, we select the books. So the number, the more outers you have, the more SQL queries will go to the database. So essentially we, we have just created a so-called N plus one problem. This problem would not happen if we disable open session in view. So if we disable it and set it to false, then it wouldn't be possible to fetch lazy collections when rendering the responses. So right now, if I try to execute it again, it will you know, throw an exception with a, with a message that probably is well known to you that it failed to lazily initialize collection because there is just no hibernate session there anymore. This problem, can be solved and be, can be solved very in a very elegant way, but that's not something that I will cover in this video. We will cover it in the next one, where I will show you how to use Spring GraphQL together with Query DSL, which provides an extremely nice combination to address exactly this problem of fetching different parts of entity only when they are requested. I hope you did enjoy it, and I hope now you will be able to start with Spring GraphQL more easily. And of course, if you would like to see the next part, I recommend you to subscribe. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.